Okay, I'm going to try to go over uh, <coughs> how to access Spotify's API using R. The package we're going to use for this is the Spotify R package, <coughs> which is at rcharlie.com slash Spotify R. Uh, and this version is 2.2.1, so you can see the installation. Um, I have tested this, and the installation from CRAN, I think, has right now some authentication problems. And it can be solved by installing it from GitHub. So if you haven't done that before, you need DevTools. And if you don't have DevTools, install that. And then we want to install from GitHub. And we say DevTools colon colon. Whenever you have two colons in a row, it's indicating using this package, run this function. Install GitHub. Yeah, that. Oops. <laughs> uh, and it's going to be... Let's see, we put a quote, charlie86 slash Spotify R. Okay. Uh, I'm getting an error here because I've already installed it, uh, but you wouldn't. And <laughs> we're going to have to say library Spotify R. Uh, but you got to spell library right. That's how they get you. Okay, let's see. We're also going to say library tidyverse. And I'm going to go ahead and say library knitter, which we're going to use uh, later to make some tables. Okay, in order to access um, the Spotify API, we have to do a couple of things. Um, specifically, we need some authentication tokens. Uh, and you can get that. Uh, there's a link straight from this website to get it. But here's the code we're going to use. So let me actually, there's a little copy function here. Let's do that. So you'll paste that in. And basically, you'll have to replace these X's with what you get from the Spotify API. And you don't want to use somebody else's, such as mine. Um, all right, so here is, uh, I believe if you, well, let me just try to follow his link and see if I can end up somewhere else. <laughs> Oh, I didn't want to go away from uh, his site, but that's okay. Okay, so this is where I end up. I was hoping I could get a different um, presentation for you, but because uh, I've already got two applications here. So first of all, you're gonna have to log in to Spotify for developers, <coughs> and you'll probably have to create an account. You probably already have a Spotify account. I would just use that same one. That's what I did. Um, same email or whatever. Don't have to though. Um, and what you'll want to do is create a new app. And there's some requirements for this. So it needs a name. Uh, let's see, I'll call mine uh, MEA. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, I'll do uh, IME673 Spotify demo. Just another class code. App or hardware description demo of using the Spotify API in R. So y'all can write whatever you want. This, you know, you can mention you're a student, you're using this for educational purposes, etc., etc. What are you building? So most people are going to use the Spotify API to make some sort of, you know, predictive app or uh, playlist. Uh, it's going to be for listening to music. It's not going to be doing data analysis. I'm going to say I don't know because I'm not making... Um, a web app, and you'll see it, it, the whole screen changes, uh, and it, it almost seems like we've made a mistake. We want to go back and do something else, but we, it, we're fine. We are not making a commercial app here, so I don't know is fine. <laughs> if we were making a commercial app and we were trying to make money off of it, there would be there would be more steps involved. So I understand that this is not for commercial use, and I can't make it from non-commercial to commercial at some point, and I agree to whatever uh, Spotify's lawyers told them to say. But that's fine. Spotify is actually really, really uh, data friendly. Okay, so if all that works out, you're going to end up on a page like this that uh, tells you a couple of things. Let me just point some things out while we're here. Here's my client ID, so I'm going to grab that again. Don't use mine. Uh, because there are rate limits, basically, and also if you were to do something bad. <laughs> I don't know what you could do bad with Spotify data, but there's always something. So I'm plugging in my little snippets there, uh, and you'll see there's also a settings page you can go here um, the stuff isn't 
necessary. If you look in the documentation, you'll see that a callback URL is a good idea. Um, that's only if you're going to access your own data, uh, which you know would require your Spotify login. So the, I think the demo given on the um, on that Spotify API page. Oh, that's right. It moved me away from it. Uh, well, anyways, the demo is they have you uh, do a local host with the port 1410, I think, and then you can use that to see, like, what are the last 10 songs I listened to or something like that. So that might be interesting. Um, if you want to do that, I would just enter the same local host they did. If you have problems with that, let me know. I'm going to leave all this alone for now. Um, to say it a different way, I don't want uh, y'all to, I don't, I don't want anybody for our class to make a report that's just their own listening history or something like that. Uh, I'm interested in how, uh, you know, individual artists uh, can be analyzed in Spotify. Okay, so um, I've got my content in here. I'm going to run this first line, yeehaw, run the second line, and then run the third line. We're basically just creating three um, variables. So that should all be very quick. Uh, let's do a quick test. I'm trying to write the word Beatles. This is the demo, I think, that uh, is on the on the page get art on that github page get artist audio features this guy uh, and then inside here we got to put quotes and then I'll type in the Beatles now keep in mind if you're typing in a more complicated band or performer name this could get you, you could get no results um, that happens a lot. So uh, if that's the case, you'll just have to try different uh, ways of writing the name, that kind of thing. So I just ran that, and it seemed to happen very quickly. I think I've already created this. Uh, so I'm going to say library knitter. And the reason I'm getting that is uh, we're going we're gonna to say Beatles. Again, this is just the demo from his page. Let's pipe that and say count the key. Mode. The key mode is like, uh, you know, it's in C sharp. It's in A minor. I'm going to say count key mode, key mode sort equals true. Uh, and head, I think he does 10. I'll do 20. Uh, and cable. What is cable? Well, first of all, let's run this without cable. Oops, sorry, I hit the wrong thing. All right, so what I'm getting from the console, if I can make the console get larger, I can. Here are the most common key signatures in Beatles songs. Now we haven't filtered out anything. So this is like every recording on Spotify of the Beatles. Realistically, that probably means uh, from a methodological standpoint, there might be duplicates of songs on multiple albums or greatest of things and stuff like that. So if we were really doing this analysis, we'd probably want to filter it down to a selection of albums. Anyway, it's kind of interesting to take a look at. Um, and also, this is just a test to make sure we are able to connect to this API and get it to do what we want. All right, let me bring that down. What is this uh, cable thing? Well, if we run that same line, I'm going to get the same results, but the, the formatting uh, looks different. So this prints out a lot better, for instance, in our markdown. Uh, what is cable? Uh, I believe I have it open somewhere. Let's see. That ain't it. There they go. Create awesome HTML table with knitter, cable, and cable extra. Uh, I read through this and it was it was pretty informative in terms of how we can style it. Uh, you can see the results you get. Uh, it's got a bunch of themes and stuff like that. So if you are picky about how your tables look, which you might as well be, uh, read about cable. It's very straightforward. So when we use cable here and we print it out to the console, we're just going to get these weird characters. But again, I believe it would work fine in uh, our markdown. So this is confirmed that. Uh, this is working for me. Uh, so I'm going to move on to uh, the next demo they have, which is doing an analysis of Joy Division, Get Artist, Audio Features. And in here, I'll type in Joy Division. Just introducing you to one other idea. So let's say Joy and uh, we're going to arrange this according to uh, mm, 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 negative valence. I'll explain valence in a minute. <laughs> uh, 
and then select, I believe this is exactly what uh, happens on the GitHub page. So I'm just kind of repeating it. Don't worry, I will do new stuff in a little while. And head five and cable. So what are we looking at here? This is a measure of the valence of um, five of Joy Division's albums, uh, organized uh, according to valence. So uh, assumedly, if we went back in this code and you know said head ten, uh, you'll see. So this is a good example of what I was talking about. There's a lot of duplicates, right? A lot of remasters, re-releases. So if we were going to publish a report on this, we'd want to filter it out uh, and only get the, the stuff that we want in there. The uh, reason we are doing two demos here is uh, with Joy Division, the, the demo given on GitHub is uh, showing you this thing called uh, Density Plot or GGJoy. So I'm going to do install packages and GGJoy. Now, no, I've already installed this, so I'm not going to run that. You'll need library, GGJoy. Uh, all right, so I'm going to say ggplot joy, which is a variable we made earlier, and our aesthetics are going to be defined according to x equals valence, y equals album name. I know we don't normally write uh, the x and y explicitly, but again, I'm just imitating what happens here. So we're going to do ngm joy and theme. Joy, uh, and he gives it a title, but that's enough. Let's take a look at what we get. So here's a plot of uh, the valence of two Joy Division albums. So what in the world is valence? Uh, I would define it as one of the um, Spotify uh, measurements. They've, they've, been, they've invented a, well, I don't know if they invented all these, but there are a number of measurements that Spotify employs that are not um, common ways that we think about music. So if you Google Spotify valence, it says this valence is uh, defined as the musical positiveness conveyed by a track. So the higher the number, the more happy. The lower the number, the more negative. You can see the scale goes from zero to one. So a high valence, you know, would be like 0.9 or something like that, and a very low one, I guess would be low. So that's what valence is. What are we looking at here? Well, this is our midpoint. You can see that one album, Unknown Pleasures, has a valence that's that's tending significantly negative. You could also see, you could make an argument that the valence is somewhat polarizing. There is less middling sentiment than there is either very high or very low. I can contest to that and then close to this other album um, following a very different trajectory. So if you're wondering, hey, could I compare that to the uh, sentiment of the lyrics? Uh, yeah, that absolutely. That's why I'm leading with valence, and that's where things get interesting. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you're wondering, like, what, what is that plot? What is a, a, a joy plot? Well, uh, let's see. I think I had that open earlier, right? So here's GG Joy, and it says it's been deprecated. Please switch over to GG Ridges. So what's GG Ridges? Okay, here's GG Ridges. <laughs> We're going deep today. And you'll see this basically is doing stuff like what we just saw before, right? So what is GG Ridges? What is uh, What are all these terms? Uh, basically, it's a density plot. This is a density plot. Uh, and so if we were to look at our plot again, uh, it's indicating that, say, for this album, uh, if you were to group together all of the valence, uh, it is peaking right around here, uh, and then there's a slow uh, dip, you know, so the, it's densest in this area and least dense down here, that kind of thing. So this isn't, I just want to clarify, this, there's no time axis here. This isn't a track by track or something like that, where it's like, oh, he gets really sad in track 12, or that's not how, this, this is no, it's no measurement of a uh, a time dimension here. This is just grouping the whole album together. If we could do this on a per track basis, um, without a doubt. 
Uh, okay, so let me just give a uh, demo of a density plot using just, just uh, using the same uh, kind of code. Um, let's see, we said ggplot. Let's ggplot our old friend MT cars. <laughs> and I'm going to say AES x equals mpg. Y equals, and we have to say as dot factor cylinder. We can have a bunch of parens plus uh, geom underscore density underscore ridges. Okay, so if I run that, uh, you'll see that um, the number of cylinders in a car, four, six, or eight from this data set. Uh, and how it relates to miles per gallon. So what can we argue from this? Well, a four-cylinder car gets much better miles per gallon pretty much across the board. There's a direct correlation, right? Um, and, you know, we could talk more about that in terms of the density, but just trying to give a demo to help you understand density plot if you are uh, new to it.